Hey everybody, I'm Laura. Thanks for coming to dance with me. Today we're going to talk about how the lead gives space to the follow, which can be a topic of great confusion and concern. Big thanks to Jenna Harry on my Patreon for asking this question. Okay, this video has taken me a ton of time to put together, but the general answer that I've come up with is, if you're a better dancer, depending on your mindset, you are better at making room for your partner. Just dance good. Oh, Thanks, Laura. Also, my opinion on this topic is, of course, completely tainted by my perspective, experience, technique, body type, because of course it is. Lindy Hop is a dance of individuality, so this topic will be different for every individual. How much space does a follower want to have? How much space does a leader want to have? Also, I think that the whole question is the wrong question and that the entire premise is untrue. Also, the act of giving your follower space is entirely about intention, which is not visual, so adding video elements was very challenging. Also. I'm not a native lead, so the bulk of the information in this video comes from observations and conversations I've had with leaders I really enjoy. Also, and I'm sorry for all the also's, but also when people ask about how a leader leaves space for the follower, what they're typically asking about is how a leader leaves space for the follower's variations, which is only a tiny part of following, but is sometimes reduced to the most and best that a follow has to offer, which I hate, but I will not talk about it in this video, but if you want to know my thoughts, I already already have a video on it, it's linked in the description. Okay, I've ranted for a second. Now that you have my perspective, I think there are some specifics that are helpful. Let's get into it. Speaking of Patreon, thank you people of Patreon for helping to make this video free for everyone in the world, including people like you. It's a voluntary subscription, and if you want to help them out, the link's in the description. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, since people are primarily concerned with making space for variations, even though I think that's the wrong premise, let's first talk about how I think of making variations not the only way to think about making variations. In an ideal world, my variations are crafted to sit inside of the structure that the leader is providing. If my leader is giving me a swing out, my hope is that my variation fits inside of that swing out and all of the many flavors and shapes a swing out can come in. The momentum and the timing should match. It has the capacity to travel backwards, be caught at some point and be redirected forward. Now, a lot of variations are crimes of opportunity. So this is all kind of a gamble on my part. I think I recognize the swing out, so I'm planning on doing something swing outy. In spite of all this activity, the variation is still eight counts. You can see here Vincenzo gives my idea additional support by landing at the same time that I land, a support that I do not reciprocate in the following move. <clears throat> Sorry. Step one is have an idea you want to try. Step two is recognize places where you think you could try that idea. If the landscape changes and it is no longer a swing out, that is my moment, in my opinion, to gracefully abandon my idea or to elaborate and transition it into something else. Here it looked like Remy was going to lead a basic send out, but I realized that he's following me, so I extend my variation to continue backwards. Easier said than done, I know. We could get into it, but for this video, just keep dancing. Dance, notice as much as you can while bravely trying things in a collaborative spirit, and then edit your mental model. This brings me to thing one leaders can do to give the follower space. Lead basics. If you lead a shape we can recognize, it is more likely that we will be able to do something in that shape. The more complicated the shape, the more complicated it is for us to figure out something we can do with it. The more frequently a direction changes, the less we can do in that direction. Back to follows, the more you dance, the more moves you'll recognize. This brings me to thing two leaders can do to give the follower space. Make it make sense. Six counts stay six counts, eight counts stay eight counts, Time doesn't shift strangely without a reason. That reason could be a new lead, that reason could be the music, but make it make sense. I think AJ is going to lead a six count pass, but then it suddenly slows down. In open position, we have a moment of solo play until the end of the phrase. You can see in both AJ and my body movement, we know it's over. We know we're gonna dance full out. He doesn't have to explicitly lead that. It is musically intuitive. If the move seems to extend randomly and it doesn't feel like there's a sense of overall continuity and flow, it's harder for me to deal with. Are we building to something? 
something? Do I have two counts to finish my idea? Do I have 12 counts to finish my idea? And now my variation isn't punctuating anything. It's not with the music, it's not with your move, it's just purposelessly filling time. Make it make sense. I need my structure, I need it. Which brings me to thing three leaders can do to give the follower space. Thing three, be confident and on time, AKA lead good. Oh my gosh, Laura Glaze is so helpful. I know it sounds reductive, but if you lead clearly and confidently, I feel like I can trust you. I can relax. Oh, you got this. I don't have to be stressed. I don't have to read your mind. Your rhythm is good. We're listening to the same song. We're together. So note for leaders, same note as followers earlier. The more you lead, the better you'll get at leading and at giving your followers space. Just keep going. All right, those are the three easiest ideas, the low hanging fruit, but now we get into how the question is the wrong question to begin with. There's so much more that a leader can do to leave space for the follower than not tripping them up during a variation. In reality, I don't think that the leader gives the follower space like it's a gift, like the leader owns all of the space. I think the whole dance is the follower space and the whole dance is the leader space. I think all possibilities within the dance rely on how skilled and willing the leader and follower are to listening to and collaborating with each other's ideas. Some of this comes down to the simplest details of lead follow mechanics. For example, the way you hold yourself as a leader has a big difference in how free your follower feels. For me, if my leader has a high default level of tension, I'm gonna have a higher level of tension in my body to match. But of course, that's gonna make me move differently and it's gonna change my ability to comfortably produce meaningful variations. Now that does not mean that I want everything to be loose and floppy. No, no, I have signed up to be moved. But just consider how much tension is needed for the desired outcome. But even beyond mechanics and technique, conversations are about what you're talking about. Are you on the same page? Do you like the same thing? Do you have the same artistic vision? For a reductive example, does one of you really want to talk about the rhythm and the other really want to talk about the melody? While you're talking about it, can you hear and respond to what the other person is saying? I mean, that's jazz, isn't it? For example, do we have similar ideas of how to hit breaks in the music. If we do, then that's a moment that we can relax into. We both know that we're going to stop or we're going to continue through with a little flourish to accentuate it or we're going to ignore it completely or we're going to have a drastic change of activity of some kind. We understand each other. Generally speaking, my preferred style of break is punctuation along the way and then keep on a moving through. This example isn't a break, but reacting to a riff is a similar idea. Now here, either Hussein has the same preference or he's accommodating my preference beautifully. This isn't the original song we danced to because it got flagged. Fortunately, the Brooks Brummel Orchestra have their own version of it. If we don't have similar ideas of how to hit the break, or if I'm not sure if we have similar ideas, do I respect my partner's taste? Do I respect my partner? If I do, I'll have wider ears to listen to what that different take might be. Maybe I can learn from it and expand my palette. For a more subtle example, do we have a similar idea of how we manage dynamic changes within the music? How do we pump up the intensity? How do we smooth it back down again? Now these changes might not even be visibly perceptible, but they are the Ouija board on which all other decisions are made. So this isn't the original song Hussein and I danced to because it got flagged, but even with this dubbed song, you can tell when the band opens up as the phrase and therefore our energy changes. Something that might be obvious to you at this point, if you are a more skilled dancer, you are more skilled at communicating in dance. The good news is just keep dancing, you'll get more skill. So it goes to show if you're a newer lead, you might be a newer listener and a newer reactor. And if your follow does a particularly demanding variation, you might not know how to incorporate it into your idea. I mean, much how if a leader leads a particularly demanding move, a follower might not know how to incorporate an idea. We are the same. And this is where, in my opinion, it really breaks away from making room for your partner's variations. You're making room for your partner. 
both of you. In my opinion, it's kind of an overlapping skill set with leading a less experienced follow. If you lead a send out and your follow does a tuck turn, presto, change you, you let a tuck turn. Now, obviously with more advanced followers, it's not that they're misfollowing or can't follow. It's just that it would be more comfortable to do something else. So we'll do that instead. In general, I think a good leader and a good follower, a good collaborator, can tell early on if something would be uncomfortable or inconvenient for their partner, so they alter the plan. Or even better, they incorporate that alteration into the plan, making it music. How can they tell so early? Well, I think some of it's technique, some of it's knowing that you need to pay attention, some of it I think is patience. Instead of feeling like you have to fill the time and run from move to move and variation to variation, just take a beat. See what your partner's up to. So it's hard for me to find a clip of the lead being patient because good leaders are patient all the time. They are tracking their follow and basing their timing off of the follow's availability constantly. You can see even though Remy is leading a lot of direction changes, he is tracking me the whole time, modulating his arm distance, body position, the amplitude of his signal to give me what I need to hear the message. Now this is one of the world's best leaders dancing with a pretty good follower. And look at how much attention he is giving this basic idea. Man, I think I just discovered I have to work harder. Let's talk some more specific instances. Sometimes a leader looks past the fog of what I'm doing and sticks to the plan. In this clip, Remy is leading a favorite combination, but I threw in a rather ambitious jump. He sticks to the combination, but you can see that his timing and attention really change to accommodate my new energy. I also end up rather far away from him, not my ideal, but Remy compensates by really reaching out for me to make the connection happen. He knows where I am, even when I'm somewhere unexpected. Now, I don't know if this is his preference for the amount of follower expression, but the man is a team player. Let's look at a different example. I have a swing out variation that has a stop in it. Wham! Option one. Remy does a swing out like normal. Let's check out another option. Wham! Option two. Remy leads an under-rotated swing out. Wham! Option three. You can see how Remy really projects to get me. Look at my footwork. I'm barely doing anything, and that man is booking it. Maybe my variation causes the leader to think of a move, which causes me to think of a way of moving through that move, which causes my leader to think of a variation, which causes me to lean into a moment, which causes my leader to think of a move that builds us into a punctuation. And that's great too. Okay, okay. I believe in structure and roles. The drummer holds the beat, the saxophone plays the melody. But I 100% believe that the way the drummer plays influences the way that the saxophone plays, which influences the way that the drummer plays, which influences the way that the saxophone plays. There can be structure and roles and still be this nebulous back and forth collaboration that gets more and more fulfilling if both musicians are aware of it and seeking it out. So yeah, I think the real question is how do leaders and followers collaborate to make space for each other? And I don't think there's an easy answer. Everything is circumstantial and changes with the partnership and the preferences of the music and the tempo. As usual, I think the answer is the work you do on the dance floor combined with the knowledge that this collaboration is the goal you're both searching for. I hope you had fun and learned a lot. If you did, click like and subscribe and comment and do all the YouTube algorithm stuff and half of the money that I get from this channel goes towards organizations that support African diasporic artists and art to honor the founders of this dance and the best way to learn how to do this dance was to do this dance. Get to it! Do the Lindy Hop!